الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم brothers and sisters how you guys doing my name is Ahmed Hamouda and is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ignoring me or you or anybody that makes dua and it's not answered or something what you ask for you know the exact opposite happened or what does this mean entirely when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something and he doesn't answer does that mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ignoring you or that he just doesn't like you or what's going on so inshallah we're going to talk about this today so we can clear this from our heads. So firstly, just by us making dua, that doesn't mean automatically that necessitates that right away Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to answer my dua or otherwise it's uh, I made dua for no reason. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can answer our duas in many ways and he can answer it indirectly and also directly. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can uh, right away, he can answer your dua. Um, however, there's other ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can even give us better than what we asked for. For example, say for example, I asked for something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't give it to me right now, but he gave it to me maybe a week later or a month later or a year later or whatever, how long later, because that's the time I needed the most. So don't think, oh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something that it has to come right now. No, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is delaying it for a time that you're going to need it most and you're going to be uh, the most uh, the most grateful for it at that time. Also, you can say that maybe by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not answering your dua, that He has prevented you or has taken you away from something that in the future would have caused you harm. Say, for example, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me some job, right? And then I never got the job, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be protecting me from that job because A, it might be a bad job for me. B, I might, you know, hate it if I already got, if I would have got it. Three, and most importantly, it might have taken me away from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the most important. So you see by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not answering your dua, sometimes it can be beneficial. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a, in a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, perhaps, perhaps the thing that's bad for you, that you think is bad for you, is actually good for you. And perhaps the thing that you think is good for you is actually bad for you. Allah knows while we do not know. So it just shows you how our wisdom sometimes can be uh, very limited. And we might, might not know the, the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan is greater than my plan, your plan, or anybody's plan. So by Him not giving us what we want or what we ask for, maybe this is uh, better for us. And lastly, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask for something, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give you it, but instead gives you something in return. For example, I ask for the, the example with the job. Ya Allah, give me this job at ABC Incorporated, for example. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't get you the job in ABC Incorporated. However, he gets you a job in uh, YEF, whatever, uh, Incorporated. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might not give you exactly what you asked for, but will give you something which is even better than it. So don't ever think by me raising my hand and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not answering me directly, which sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can easily grant you uh, the dua directly and it can happen immediately. But just think for the times that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't, that doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ignoring you or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates you in any sort of way. This is false. In addition, um, sometimes even our du'as, like we're saying we're making du'a and maybe it's not answered, maybe it's asked. But before we even get to that, are we making du'a in a legitimate manner? Because I can be calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or making dua, but certain things are not present and that's what's making my dua not uh, being accepted. Not the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to give it to me or maybe it's not good for me or maybe he's going to give it to me later. Maybe my dua in the beginning was never good. It was never uh, acceptable. It was void from the beginning. What do I mean by this? The Prophet peace be upon him says in the authentic hadith, he says every single one of your duas is accepted except for the one who is impatient and says, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I asked you for dua and you haven't given me. Like you show impatience. So automatically, if you're making dua and you're like, Oh Ya Allah, uh, why didn't you give me this already? I asked for it last week. I want it now. This is showing impatience and this actually voids your initial dua. So before you even get to being accepted or the wisdom or you know something else, your dua itself, when you are being impatient and you're questioning why it's not happening or why it's, you're not seeing immediate results, that can void your dua in the beginning. Secondly, when you make dua, it has to be with some type of emotion, some type of, you know, you have to be, you know, connected to it. You have to feel it in your heart with your emotions and your feelings and everything. You know, now today we just make a dua like, 
Ya Allah, you know, I know that's not going to happen, but I want a million dollars. Like something that's not, you don't even have any feeling towards it. You don't have no emotion with it. So how can you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer a dua from you when you're saying it with like heedlessness? Like, oh, I don't care. Bro. Ya Allah, you know, guide me or something like that. No, when you make dua, you better be convicted and, you know, wanting it so bad. And it even shows you if you want to see, okay, am I really uh, convicted and I'm serious when I'm making dua? See how many times you make that dua. If it's a dua you said once and never repeated it again, then it just shows you that your dua was never something that means a lot to you. But if you find yourself making it every single day or every single you know certain period, and sometimes you get emotional, sometimes you get crying, sometimes you just feel like, man, I really want this to happen, then it shows that you really want that that thing that you're asking for, which will make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer it in the, the, the ways we said before, right? So don't when you're making dua, don't just make it a careless and heedless dua, you know, supplication, Ya Allah. You know, get me the job, I guess, you know, if you can, even though I'm, you know, I did bad in the interview. No, you make dua with 100% conviction and sincerity. Don't just put on, like, for example, now, for perfect example, today we go on Facebook and we see someone, you know, they have this sad video or this, this picture or whatever. And we say, may Allah help him. May Allah do this. With no type of feeling, no type of, we're just typing on the keyboard. Let's be people who really feel, and when we say, Ya Allah, guide him, or Ya Allah, help him, or Ya Allah, protect him or her, we really, really mean it. Whether we're on a keyboard, whether we're in person, whether we're on the phone, whether whatever it is, that's what we have to do in order so we can get the best results in terms of our du'ats. Another point, you know, I hear this so many times, is that who am I to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something? Like, I'm in such a bad state or I'm sinning, or I'm doing this, who am I to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something? Well, brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like any human being or anything we can think of. So I don't have to have like a certain, uh, you know, uh, prerequisites for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept my du'ats. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this very, very clear in Surah Al-Baqarah, where he says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عَبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ أُجِيبُ الدَّعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دعان. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in short, he says that when my servants ask you concerning me, indeed I am near. Near meaning, you know, uh, spiritual closeness, not physical closeness. Um, I answer, I respond to the call of the caller when he calls. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer anyone who calls upon him when he calls. So we have three very, very important things. The first as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will respond to the call. The one sincere, desperate, emotional dua or one call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're raising your hands or you're thinking you had that one desperate call. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even respond to that one. Even if it's just once in your life. And who who is this person? Is it the, the strong Muslim? Is it the guy with the big beard and the masjid? The, with the, you know, the, the whole set on? The sister with the hijab? And everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says... Da'wat al-da'i, the one who calls upon him, whoever it may be. And all the tafsirs from Ibn Kathir and uh, Tabarani and all these guys, all these scholars, this means of all of humanity. The, all of the, the, every single human, this is who it's referring to. That one person who sincerely calls to the Rabb, not to any person or to any idol, when they say, the, the, uh, my creator, my Lord, almighty God, if they call out, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer. And then the third part, which is, by far my favorite part of this verse, إِذَا دَعَان When he calls, when he or she calls, we have the, 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 the thinking is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give me things without me asking. I just cross my legs, sit back, you know, uh, lean on my couch and just expect everything to happen to me. And this is a very, very important concept in Islam that nothing happens just by chance or just by luck or anything. Everything, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about 500 times in the Quran, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Or إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Or بَشِّرْ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Always repeating this phrase إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believe and on top of that do good action. Now this is something that's very very important in Islam and something that I absolutely love about Islam is that you have to do your part. And this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pushing it again in me and your, in your head so we can think because this is what the Quran does. It makes us think and ponder and reflect that we have to do our work. When we call, when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's when He's going to answer. Don't expect everything to just go, you know, perfect without you ever asking, without you ever making dua. That's not how it works. And even, to be honest with you, it's foolish for us to think like that. 
for things just to fall in our plate, things just to come down and be hugs and kisses from just about us being, you know, people. This is false. So when you call, no matter who you are, once in your life, a sincere, legitimate, conviction call, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer. And how do you say we answered? We're going to go back to the beginning of the clip, right? How's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer? He's going to answer you directly, right away, show immediate results, or in the other ways we mentioned before. So now, one more thing. Is that some people may say, Tab Ahmed, I'm, do I'm promising you, I'm doing all this. Tab Hakam, I'm not seeing results. Brothers and sisters, Wallahi, we have to think about it for a second. By us even having this mindset, it's showing that we are in very, very dangerous waters. Because I'm saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I did all A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you're not listening to me, so you're doing wrong. So we have to be careful when we're thinking about this. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't owe me and you nothing, okay? Just because we started praying two, three days ago or two, three years ago, doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to give us everything that we asked for. At the end of the day, we're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's the reason why we were created. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us Jannah and giving us rewards, that's all a bonus for us. You know, we're not working for Jannah. We're not going to be, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I did this, this, this. Here's my ticket into Jannah. We don't buy our ticket into Jannah. We don't buy our ticket for us getting what we want. None of this is true. So it really, really comes down to the point is that I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I know that He is Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Wadud and all these beautiful names, the loving, the most forgiving, the most gracious, all the beautiful names. Please have mercy on me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me what I want. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His infinite mercy, His infinite love, what happens? He will give us this dua or He will grant us Jannah and He will grant us all these things. But never think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to give me something because I'm doing ABC. I'm giving, I'm making dua, or I'm praying now, or I'm doing this. Who are you? Just because you prayed two days ago or you started taking your religion seriously, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to give you everything that you want? That's not how it works. In fact, this is exactly opposite what Islam really is. Is that you have to sometimes fight your whims and desires. Sometimes things might not be going your way. However, you fight and you push and you do your most to stay a strong Muslim. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this many times in the Quran. In fact, even in Surah Al-Baqarah, once again, you know, we're not even going far in our in the, the, our analysis of the Quran. We're still in Surah Al-Baqarah. We mentioned many verses from Surah Al-Baqarah today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do they think they will enter paradise without tests? Well, like brothers and sisters, think about that. Is that yes, we're asking for things or maybe we're in rough and tough times, but that doesn't necessitate that that doesn't uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to be automatically given every single thing we want because part of that test is for me and you to struggle. Part of that says Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants to see if me and you are true believers. So maybe He'll give us you know emotional distress or maybe family issues or maybe money issues or maybe health issues, any type of issues, just to see if we're truly believers. And if you stay patient through these times, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala of course is going to reward you. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says many times in the Quran, "Fa inna Allah ma'asabirin." That indeed Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is with those who are patient. Patience is one of these very, you know, highly looked at virtues in Islam. It's very, very good. So we ha really have to be from these people who understand that yes, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does answer my dua, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is never obligated, or does He have to answer my dua just because I'm answering? No, this is 100% false. And you are actually doing something that if you don't catch yourself, something that can lead you down very dangerous paths. That you think Allah Subhanahu wa Taala owes you something. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't owe you nothing. And my final point is that brothers and sisters, don't be selfish, man. Don't just make du'a for yourself. Yes, of course, maybe you're the person that you're making du'a for the most. Or maybe you're, you know, you're, you're worried about your situation. Of course, that's good. However, don't just make du'a about yourself. Because Islam is, not, is anything but a selfish religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says many times in the Quran and the Prophet peace upon him says many times in the authentic hadiths the, 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 the importance of the community, the importance of the ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْإِخْوَةِ That indeed the, the, the mu'minun, the believers, they're like brothers and sisters. And the Prophet peace upon him says, you guys all know this hadith, that verily none of you truly believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself, right? So it shows you that aspect of togetherness, that aspect of unity. So don't just make du'a for yourself. In fact, by you making du'a for your brothers and sisters, maybe you guys didn't know this, but the Prophet peace be upon him, once again, in the authentic hadith, he says when, for example, uh, if I make a du'a for my brother or sister in Islam, in his absence, meaning he's not present or she's not present, 
then that dua will certainly be answered. That's what the Prophet peace upon him says in the authentic hadith. That when I make a dua for my fellow brothers and sisters in Islam, and they are not present, they are absent, then that dua will certainly be answered. And in fact, even the angels, they will make that same dua to you. They'll say, may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to you. So if I'm asking for to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect and help and you know uh, grant them knowledge and grant them guidance, the angels are also asking this dua for me as well. So you see how, subhanAllah, that the, the making dua for uh, others is benefiting them because we, we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters in Islam. This is a, a ummah, this is a, a, a body. For example, like the Prophet peace upon him says in the authentic hadith, that the ummah is like a body. We're all together. So make dua for your brothers and sisters and as a result, then you will even get dua for yourself as well. So this aspect in Islam, Allah, it's something that, of course, we always overlook. We always look the aspect of dua. Oh, you just want me to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put in the effort and wallahi, you're going to see amazing results. You're going to see crazy results in front of you. So really take that effort and really put it forward. Because dua, it's, it's, it, it, Allah, the Prophet peace upon him says in another hadith that dua, the dua is worship. That by you making dua, you're, you know, you're, you're doing a worship act as well. Allah, it's an amazing aspect in Islam. It's something that we're always over, uh, overlooking and always underestimating. And something that we really, really, start, really, uh, really need to start doing more. So inshallah... Understand this video, maybe watch it again just so you can understand it from beginning to end. You know, when I make dua, I have to make it with sincerity and, you know, with, you know, with emotion. I have to be convicted. I have to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to answer it for me. I cannot show impatience. And maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't answer my dua, but in fact, He doesn't give it to me, which is protecting me from things that I do not know. Or maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give it to me, but at a later time. Or maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to not give me that, but give me something even better. So, so many aspects in it and so many ways we can think about it. And Wallahi al -Azim, anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, we should say Alhamdulillah. We really should say Alhamdulillah. Even the Prophet, peace upon him, says in another authentic hadith that the condition of the, a Muslim is, is, is different. It's gharib. I don't know how to translate it 100%. It's like it's strange. It's different. That when something good happens to them, they say Alhamdulillah. When something bad happens to them, they also say Alhamdulillah. So we should be always saying Alhamdulillah. No matter, even if our du'ats are, you know, not answered in front of us or we don't get exactly what we want, say Alhamdulillah. Because maybe the thing that we think, uh, for example, the, the, the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, maybe the thing we think is good for us and we really want it and, you know, it's going to bring make my life better and all this, is actually bad for you. And it will lead you down dangerous paths. And in fact, the thing that you've been asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take away from you or to get away from you or to remove you from, is in fact good for you and keeping you in a good state in terms of your Iman. So thank you guys for watching. Please, if you guys benefit from this video, click the subscribe button by clicking this button. Also, check out my older videos um, so you can understand key concepts in Islam and help you just become a, a, you know, strengthen your Iman because we all need reminders here and there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See you guys next time.